All right, back to Crossfire. Let's see if we can tell the difference. Yep, instantly can tell the difference. Holy shit, what a difference. I mean, it's not a lot, but yeah, I can definitely tell. Yep. And demonetize. There we go. Got that out of the way real quick. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream, folks. I am excited to be here, and I'm excited for you to be here. Uh, that clip was from my first round of flying TBS Tracer. That's right. That was Tracer versus Crossfire. Video should be out tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed. And uh, I don't know if the bell works anymore, if the bell even exists, but hey, hit it if it's there. Uh, so the way I do that testing is I fly, I have two 533 Tiny Trainers that are basically identical. One's got Crossfire, one's got Tracer. I flew five total packs, two on Crossfire, then two more on Tracer, then I went back and flew one more on Crossfire. And I tell you what, I can definitely, definitely tell the difference. Can't tell the difference going from Crossfire to Tracer, but when you go backwards, Ooh, that's where you notice it. Same thing for going backwards to D8 from D16 or any other protocol. You realize how much D8 sucks. <laughs> it is a huge difference. Welcome to the live stream. I am TweetFPV. Call me Tweet, call me Dan, whatever you want to call me. That's fine. If you want to get my attention over on the, uh, the little chat bar thingy, it's over here where I'm pointing. I know it doesn't look like that to you. Hit at and then tweet and it tab and whatever and it should light up in yellow on my end if you have a question or you just want to throw some love my way super chats always welcome greatly appreciate that welcome to the live stream speedy turtle thanks for stopping by l leston as usual one of the uh one of the normies in my chat he's always here mike bergman robert ortlep uh the usual clan i am so happy you're all here today today i have my mailbag. This is all my Banggood budget F7 quad parts. Well, not all of them. It's mostly all of them. A minus one piece. Uh, the VTX decided it wanted to come in a separate date in a separate package. Really weird. So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and spark this guy up. I haven't thrown this bad boy up in a while. Robert Orlip, welcome to the live stream. And uh, so today is going to be kind of a quickie. Um, I have to get on the road in about uh, maybe eight hours to drive from southern Alabama back to uh, beautiful motherland that is northern Michigan for the holidays. Go see the family and whatnot. And let's see. Well, that ain't right. That stupid thing, it's, it glitches every once in a while. Displays some crazy numbers. Uh, yeah, so heading back to to uh, the families for the holidays. Definitely packing some quads with me. Not taking the one wheel. That's a little salty and nasty out. I don't think I'll uh, have too much fun riding that around. Um, here we go. Look at that. Six. Thousand subs. Actually, it's about 608, but this thing only updates every 10. Hit 6,000 uh, a couple days ago. Super excited about that. Very happy about it. I also, uh, I just got it like a, a year in review um, little clip from TubeBuddy. And if you don't know what TubeBuddy is, it's something creators use to kind of manage their content on YouTube. It allows me to uh, upload videos at a certain schedule without assigning them to a playlist. So I can kind of keep private videos for patrons that they get to see early, which is another perk of being a patron, uh, along with the monthly giveaways I do over there. Uh, and then it, it does analytics and tracking and stuff like that. And they sent me a, a little clip and it, it uh, basically told me how much I have grown in the last year. And I was pretty impressed with the numbers. I think it was over 10,000 comments and like over... Oh, I could just look it up instead of just trying to remember it. Look at that. 249 uploads, 78 or 783,000 views, 6,000 subs, and uh, 
28,000 hours watched. I cannot believe it. Absolutely astounding. Cannot believe it. Uh, I never, ever thought that this is where I would end up when I started my... I actually, I didn't really start a channel. I just, I had R9 and I had Crossfire. Nobody was talking about R9. I put it, I put a range test out there and man, this thing took off like wildfire. Um, my oldest, oldest sponsor, very first sponsor, Bangers. They are the very first people that contacted me about becoming a, uh, a sponsor reviewer, if you want to call it that. And they're still with me today. Uh, I like reviewing for Banggood. They're very easy to work with. I can put out a video saying a product's crap. And they're like, eh, okay, we'll put it on our website and moving on. Um, so really, uh, I, I know people don't like Banggood, but they've treated me well. And uh, I know a lot of people that they've treated well too. Double uh, A, thank you very much. Uh, Mike Bergman, dude, you really have some good helpful content. Don't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like to help, man. Um, <laughs> uh, tell them people don't like Banggood. These people are wrong. Uh, yeah, well, uh, business practices are a little different than what you might be used to. Um, when you get a broken product and they offer you 50% uh, as a refund, clearly don't take that. That's that's just a weird way of doing things. So anyways, this is going to be kind of a quick stream. If you have any questions, like in-depth questions, go to... Uh, maybe I'll just I'll just type it in here www.tweetfpv.com and you'll find a link to email, Patreon, and all the affiliate stuff. Go through there, hit the link that you need to get to. Uh, if you want to leave me a question or if you have a, an in depth question you need some help with, go ahead and hit up Patreon. That is the best way to get troubleshooting advice. Real quick questions, we can do it here on the live, but the more in depth stuff. Um, Patreon is the way to, or not Patreon, um, well, Patreon too, uh, but Discord, that's the place to do it. All right, so going to be a short stream today, hopefully. I know I say that, but midnight will roll around real quick. We're going to go through the stuff in the bag, see what we got, and see what I think about it. All right, so without any further ado, back to the bench. Drone Excursion, welcome to the live stream, buddy. So... I think that's all of it. Oh, there we go. So, like I said, um, the one thing that we are missing. Uh, let me see if I can put a little another little source here. So, stand by. Source. Nope. Wrong button. Video capture device. Bria. There we go. And we'll. Hey. Oh, is it sounding choppy? Let me know. Let me know how the audio sounds. Mike Bergman's got an audio choppy issue. That's not good. Mm, all right, let me let me try to change some things here. Crap. So, does it sound okay now with the, the face camera, this one here? So, that's good. And how about now? Sound fine? Bad. No. So for some reason that is acting weird. All right, let's uh, let's do the old uh, A5100 reset routine. All right, stand by. It's gonna go. It's gonna look weird here for a second. Nope. nope. There we go. So let's turn this on. Turn this on. And oh, come on. You know, this camera is going to be the. I hate this camera sometimes.
Okay, how about now? This is this is a terrible way to start off a stream. <laughs> but it wouldn't go any other way here. How's that sound? Good? All right. What the heck? That is so weird. All right. So let's get down to it. Let's go through the least interesting thing first. And that's props. Props are props, you know. Uh, the... The whole group, the gang, decided that the Hurricane uh, 51466 was going to be the prop of choice. Uh, these feel an awful lot like a HQ uh, style prop. Nothing super special about it. Hub looks nice and chonky, nice and thick. These do have the uh, the Popo mounts on them, but we're not using Popo motors. Um, yeah, I, I have a lot of issues. So I've got, this is a uh, Canon A5100, or sorry, Sony A5100. Awesome camera. Very good camera for doing this live stream. And it goes to an Elgato 4K um, USB capture card, which I think that's a lot of my issue is that, that capture card down here. It's just a little USB dongle. Um, I have a another capture device. It's a a razor rip saw. I might start using that if I keep having issues with this. But I've got a like a weird homeostasis thing going on right here where I know how to fix the issues and I don't want to introduce anything new. So we're gonna keep rocking this, but it's definitely something I'm gonna look into in the future. Okay, so props. Props are out of the way. Receiver, it's a FR Sky R oh, sorry, it's XM Plus. I remember we went with the XM Plus because we were gonna go cheap and quality. And nothing too special about that, but check this shit out. What do you see there? Huh? Huh? What do you think? Pre-flash with AX or um, ACCST version 2.1 out of the box. So, if you do not have a uh, a radio with ACCST 2. Point something on it not going to work. Um, so if you're flying, say, um, let's say you're doing D16 with your Tiny Hawk on an access radio, then you're not going to be able to do both at the same time. You're going to have to flash your transmitter back and forth. So this kind of sucks, but this is easy to flash back to version 1.3. So no big deal there. Uh, it definitely is not over the air. This is old school FR Sky uh, tech here. Nothing special. So, Free Sky thinks they're doing the right thing. I very much disagree. All right, over to the camera. We settled on the Foxy Razor Mini. It's funny. I just gave one of these away about <laughs> about a month ago. <laughs> Uh, I uh, haven't used a whole lot of Foxer cameras, and the the thing with this is the frame needed the mini size camera. So there we go. Not a whole lot special about it. Um, I'm really curious how it's going to look. Man, look at that lens. It. All right, the camera is not capturing what I'm seeing here. This lens is just massive. Good grief that looks like that <laughs> this looks this looks really really nice i i am impressed with the profile that that lens look at this thing it's like it's like looking at it's like an eyeball look how, mm, that has got to that's got to be capturing some decent video uh video let's see what else is in a box here box in a box it's like a hat in a hat uh, okay, so it does have that uh, the extra mounting bracket to make it full size. Screws does come with a little uh, control board and the harness. Cool, cool. All the things you would expect from a uh, a top tier camera manufacturer like Foxeer. Um, just because I don't use Foxeer cameras doesn't mean they're not any good. Um, I'm just I started off on run cam and I've always kind of done run cam so. Um, Run cam's my preferred, but 
Uh, I'm always looking to try new things. Yeah, the lens is huge. Uh, okay, over to the chat. Uh, Celis, welcome to the uh, the live stream here. Um, Speedy Turtle, if you don't know who Speedy Turtle hit, that, 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 that words words are tough. If you don't know who Speedy Turtle is, uh, he is the guy that kind of came up with the idea, or at least acted on the idea of creating like the the traveling box of FPV parts. It's like the give a penny, take a penny, but for quad parts. Send you the box, you take out what you need, put in what you don't need of the stuff that you have laying around that you just don't want to get rid of and you don't have use for, ship it on to the next guy. Super cool idea, and I believe he's got two boxes floating around the country now. Still just in the U.S., but a awesome idea. And he's also got a Patreon, and I believe he's given away a Source 1 um, February, right? Is that right? Speedy, if uh, if you want, go ahead and drop a link to that to your Patreon in here, and uh, show show the good folks what's going on. January, January is the giveaway. Uh, let's see, FPV Drone Life two fifteen, sweet man, that's a mouthful of a name. Uh, Mr. Tweed, I tell you, got your grip tape for my Beta FPV Light Radio and the TS one hundred, well as the USB roller cage kit for my Trans X ninety plus, and I was extremely happy with all three products. Thank you for your support. Uh, all that stuff is done is basically a passion project of mine. Uh, fill in, find a need and fill it. We're going to go off on a tangent here. So lately, um, I've been getting emails and DMs from people wanting to know how to get manufacturers to sponsor them. You know, they're usually pretty low, low sub count or pretty high sub count, low view count. Um, don't get into this for the free shit. It's not free. I don't pay anything, but it does come out of my time. My time is worth something. Everything has a price. Um, do what you love. Do what you want to do. And find a need and fill it. I found a need for people needing help with FR Sky products. That is, I think is probably how I got on the board for most of this. People needed help with it. I happen to have a very good grasp of it. And I got it out there to the people. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. But this is a absolute total grind. YouTube doesn't pay. They don't pay worth a dang. Uh, my expenditures just for my video editing, my NLE uh, editing software, my audio software, and then um, TubeBuddy barely gets covered. So just to put that all in perspective. But I still love what I'm doing, and I'm not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, bedtime for us on the East Coast. Good luck with the stream. Love, uh, love y'all. Fast take chances. Snoots, thank you for stopping by. Glad to see you, and uh, we shall enjoy the live stream. All right, back to the bench. So uh, this was an easy, no-brainer choice as far as uh, what we were picking out on the list. If uh, we can go over here and show you the list. Um, I probably should have been showing you this the whole time. So Emacs Eco 2s, we went with the 1800 KV motor. So a little bit higher KV. Uh, no, 1900. Sorry, 1900 KV motors. Uh, a little higher KV than what most people would think they'd want for success. But I want to go a little hot on these Eco 2 motors. We're an absolute no-brainer. Um, only thing better, at least price for value, would be the uh, original eco ones and these things are not disappointing at all they're they're not very notchy um you don't have that really cogginess in there so hopefully these are smooth yet powerful um you can see where they cut the corners um these do not have arc magnets on them i don't think they do anyways oh no shit yep they do have arc magnets so i think it might just be material let's go ahead and get this bell off of here uh, nope that's not going to do it. There we go. Let's see if we can get this off without stripping the screw out. It's definitely got some lock snot on there. Screw in a washer. So normally when you're building a quad, I always suggest you get uh, five or six motors just in case one's dead or you smash one on your maiden. Uh, but budget build. Calls for budget times. Yeah, there we go. So the windings look 
fairly good. Um, nothing to write home about. But they look pretty good. Single strand wire, I believe. Yeah, single strand. Not bad. The, the bearing's kind of weird how it's recessed down inside of there. Um, I haven't seen that before. Usually they sit kind of proud and there's a spacer in between them to kind of keep them that way. But uh, no, I trust the E-Max knows what they're doing. Let's go over to the bell here. Uh, so everybody out there is doing this, this kind of crush washer, oh darn it, O-ring thing. I believe iFlight was the first one to do this, and pretty much all the manufacturers have followed suit. So you've got this rubber O-ring in there to kind of preload the bell, because uh, older motors, when you torque these things down, you could lock the motor right up. Yeah, they look they look pretty much the same construction as the original Emacs, except for these just have kind of a, a newer finish on the outside of them. I like that. This these look like decent motors. It's a two piece design, you know, no no unibel type stuff going on here. Um, what's it saying there? T. 112. Uh, look in there. Let me take a closer look here. Nope, I can't see it in there. Oh well. All right, so not too shabby. And not a whole lot you could tell just by tearing them apart. Um, proof in the pudding between the crashes and how well they perform. So the older motors, without that crush O-ring, you would have to kind of like, um, you have to very carefully tighten this down, or you would end up locking the motor up. So not bad here. Uh, let's see. Magnets are curved. Yes, they are curved. Yeah, these do look like pretty nice budget motors. Um, there aren't a whole lot of budget about them, to be honest with you, um, besides the price. And I don't think the average Joe is going to be able to tell the difference. Should I put that in there? This is a surprise for later. I don't think the average Joe is going to be able to tell the difference between um, a $12 motor and a $25 motor. Do get a, a prop nut. It's not a low profile. We get an extra um, bell screw. And the thing I like about Emacs is, and they include uh, two different sets of mounting hardware, one for 5 mil and one for 3 mil thick arms. Oh, three sets of screws and one for 4 mil thick arms. So they pretty much got you covered. I do, I strongly believe that the frame manufacturer should support or should supply you with your motor screws because who's who else is going to know how long screws you need? The, the, motor, the frame manufacturer. Over to the chat here. Uh, Drone Surgeon, have you tried the LRS on the older R9 firmware? It's supposed to be great. I have not, and I don't have my old R9 module anymore. I don't know what I'd do with it. I think I was talking to a guy that had one that he burned up and he needed one for, I think all, all he had was on, everything he had was on R9, so I gave it to him just to get him back up and running and to be a nice guy. I do have the... Um, R9 Lite Pro for my X9 Lite, but I don't know if Express LS works on that. Uh, EDOC, uh, Drone Race Academy did a motor blind test and had a hard time telling that the Ecos from the Pacer. Yeah, there's, it's very difficult to tell the difference. I think the biggest difference you're going to find is the dimension and the KV. Uh, let's see, from the 533 motors, we're in a class of their own. Yeah, 533 motors are something else, man. Uh, after drone life, uh, tweet, how do I get involved in the box thing? Uh, talk to Speedy Turtle. Speedy Turtle, drop a link to your Discord down in the, uh, the doobly-doo there. And, um, or however, uh, FUV Drone Life gets in on there. All right. Let's go to here. So, uh, at the last minute, we were, we were going to go with a 
Mamba F4 stack, tried and true, cheapest chips. Uh, but at the last minute, kind of pivoted for a couple extra bucks and went with a Hyphon RC F7 and 45 amp ESC combo, making this the the cheapest F7 budget build from Banggood worth flying. Good marketing, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so I have not seen this flight controller yet, and that honestly was the first time I've ever heard of Haifang. Steel mounting screws, already off to a good start. Don't use nylon on your stacks, folks. Let's, uh, let's get in here. So, what do you, let's see, ESC or the flight controller first? Um, let's look at the ESC. Man, I meant to hit record when I started this. I didn't do it. I'm an idiot. All right. So uh, I normally fly only 20 by 20, uh, but for the budget build, we're going to go with a standard 30 by 30 plus. I think that's all this frame would support. Uh, the frame was dictating a lot of our purchases here. Um, speedy, maybe sleepy now. All right. Hang on a second. Let me, uh, let me get over here. I'll, uh, I shall. Invite people, copy, and there you go. That's uh, that Speedy Turtles old Discord linky there, I think. Should be anyways. So, let's see. We went with... There we go. So, this is the Haifang uh, flight controller, but there was a little bit of a package deal for the frame came with this flight controller. So 30 by 30, uh, nice big old monster solder pads. Um, definitely novice friendly for soldering. Very, very little filtration on here. You can see that there's only maybe five caps there and another four on the backside. So you are absolutely gonna need to run a external low ESR capacitor and luckily she comes with one. This is some, oh, this is a Sanyo. 1000 microfarad, 35 volts, so this should be good enough. I'm liking how a lot of these new flight controllers are coming with these holes punched in the board here for provisions for your um, your low ESR cap. So you would jam this sucker in there before you start slaughtering anything up. Easier said than done. Go on, get in there. There you go, like that, like, like zo. And you give it a little bend over, and then you uh, you slaughter up your wires there. Nice little features, nice little attention to detail, having the the holes through the board for your cap. Um, not not a necessary thing, but it's kind of nice to have. Yeah, there is like zero filtering on this thing, so I'm hoping it isn't a very noisy thing. But with the the big capacitor on it, it should help out. Uh, mounting, it does come with rubber gummies. Uh, soft mounting ESCs has become a thing. And it should, I think in theory, it would help keep vibrations from coming up the stack into the flight controller. But um, I would definitely prefer soft mounting over uh, rigidly mounting my uh, ESC flight controller stack anyways. All right. So we got come on. Really? This has been my week, guys. Where'd number four go? Oh, it's in there. Uh so ESC comes with rubber mounts. Some screws, ESC, or a low SCR, ESR capacitor. These screws are only about 25 millimeters long. So may not be long enough for application. We'll see when we get into the building process. 
Uh, it does come with a little bit of wire. It's not a lot. It might be enough, might not. 14 gauge. And we're looking at about uh, 100 millimeters of 14 gauge wire for the discharge. This should be plenty of, you know, it's, it's big enough. And it does come with a genuine, look at this, genuine AMAS XT60. Look at that. This is the real deal. It is very rare that a budget flight controller comes with a, a genuine AMS uh, XT60 with the back shell and everything. Very nice. So far, so good. All right, we'll put that aside. Leave that. Yeah, cat shell, cat, the cap hole should always be a thing. I don't know why. They aren't, but um, it's definitely something nice to have. Not necessary, but definitely a nice. All right, so let's get to the flight controller. Man, it's been so long since I've built a 20 by 20 that this thing just looks weird to me. It's just so blank. So much space on it. So much room for activities. So here we go. We have the Haifang RC F7 Pro V2. So... They've been around long enough to have a V1, apparently. They got a V2. And man, there is just nothing on this thing. Um, the receiver is on UR2. It's nice with that silk screen on the back. And it also has your uh, target written right on the board. See that? It's right on the board. That's a callback to a, a, a South Park that's running through my head right now, where uh, the guy's doing the infomercial talking about the, uh, the dragon is on the blade. Yeah, uh, silk screening is really nice on this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but no, no looking up online where everything goes for this thing. This is really nice. It has little diagnostic LEDs on here for power and state. This is nice. It has Bluetooth, I believe. I gotta say, in in the hand, this is looking to be a much better flight controller than I thought it would be. It's even set up for not being attached to a foreign one. You have your you have your uh, ESC connections here, so power, ground, and signal, I think. Or is that LEDs? No, that must be LEDs. Yeah, look at that. Man, this is... Pretty impressive. It's got a uh, HD out, so this is uh, DJI ready with that connector here. This goes straight into the air unit and straight into the board. Not too shabby. Oh my god, the the, the chat. Looking at the chat. <laughs> yeah, South Park reference. Um, that's the way this thing works up here. I I start spouting off references from things like that, and the the kids I work with look at me like I'm insane. Might be. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, FPV Drone Life. Uh, if you don't mind, I have a question. I have a Xylo Stack Flight Controller, 4 one ESC. It's F4. I was wondering if it's possible to hook up a Catac Vista OSD to the flight controller. And if so, where would I wear it? Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's hit pause. Uh, let's see. Let's look at some other questions here. Um, does it have an OSD chip? OSD chip is this one right here. Right there. So that's OSD chip. All right. So let's let's poke on the old confuser here. So you've got a Xylo. Xylo. Stacks. Stacks. So look like this guy here, uh, FPV Drone Life. Dauntless, welcome to the uh, live stream. Travis Stevens, welcome to the live stream. Okay, this is the guy. What was the question? Let's see. Is it possible to hook up Catac Vista OSD to the flight controller? Where would I wear it to? Let's find some 10 outs. 10 out, 10 outs. 
I've got a different mouse today, guys, so let me know if it's too loud for you. Mm. I can't type today. Uh, yeah, Travis Stevens, all you need is uh, a UART 5 volt and ground. That's not entirely true for the uh, Cadex Vista. I think the Vista needs higher voltage than 5 volts. Uh, I could be wrong, though. Come on, why is this thing being dumb? Ugh, come on. Uh, let's see. Dawes H, good soldering iron. Yeah, the sec the Sequire SQ001 is a clone of the TS100, but it's identical in every every way, basically. And it is, uh, it is a darn good soldering iron. Let's see. Well, I guess as long as I can get a good picture of it. Well, we're right back here, aren't we? All right, so let's see, we got TX4 here. And let's see, we got VTX Smart Audio. Man, the silk screen sucks on this picture. TX3. Uh, it depends on what kind of, what you already have hooked up to your UARTs. Um, I would say probably using uh, RX and TX4 would probably work out fine for hooking up your Vista. So I would go there for your TX and RX. Um, Cax Vista. Let's see, what's the power requirement on the Vista? I don't remember. So seven to four point five. So you can't use a five volt pad, and a five volt pad is going to draw too much power. So the problem with the Xylo flight controller is you're going to need a external back, which isn't a big deal. Uh, you would probably need that to power it. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, you can do VBAT. Uh, the the older um, the the standard air unit, the big guy, that thing was very specific. It needed four S voltage only. Uh, so yeah, VBAT. And um, TX and RX4. I think that would probably work out just fine for you. But uh, FUV Drone Life, uh, go to my website, www.tweetfuv.com, hit the Discord link, and uh, join my Discord. And there I can help you out way better than I can on the live stream. Um, but a little, little sidebar here. All right, back over to the uh, flight controller here. Um, Actually, we can go back to the product page here. It's a MPU six thousand, so that's the uh, that's the good flight controller. Uh, Ten volt, two and a half amp back. That is perfect for what we need for powering the the Vista. It has a USB C port, which is uh, something that you're starting to see a little bit newer on flight controllers. And that's about all the like really standout features that I see here. Um, I'm kind of curious what that BT pad is for. It almost makes you think that this has Bluetooth. That one right there. <coughs> hmm. 
but interesting to see what it has when we connect it, which we can do now too. Nope, I don't know what I did with my USB cables. Be right back. Dang it, how can I not find a USB-C cable? It's like all I have until right now. Over three. And there we go. Ah, got one. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in the Betaflight world. It's something I always like to do with flight controllers, just kind of take a quick look, look, see. Holy UARTs, look at that. <laughs> so many UARTs here. Uh, so they plan UART 2 for rear receiver, UART 4 for MSP, that is how you get the uh, the DJI OSD and uh, Betaflight to talk together. And they already set this up for Tramp, interesting. So yeah, I don't see any Bluetooth set up in here. But it's weird that it's not really sure what the, the green light is. Maybe this does have Bluetooth. Pop the old phone, see if I got a weird Bluetooth something or other floating around the house now. Hmm. No, I don't see anything. Interesting. All right, yeah, so uh, target is, like I said, Haifang F7. Comes with Betaflight 4.2 on it. Not too shabby. I know you didn't see that because I didn't switch the cameras. I'm an idiot. All right, uh, let's see. Over the chat here. Uh, sorry, Tweet, can't stay up for a 14 hour day. Freaking tired. Have a Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, same to you, Robert Ortlip. Uh Have a Merry Christmas and uh, take it easy, man. Get some rest. Oh, let's see. It has Bluetooth. Yeah, I didn't see a Bluetooth network come up uh, on my my phone. And you would think they would mention it in the product listing, unless I just scanned past it too quick. But I don't know what else that BT light would be for. Oh, has wireless Bluetooth parameter. Huh, look at that. Uh, oh, uh, let's see. You are choosing. It's okay. So that's weird that they don't have it set up. Um, yeah, I see it. I see it on the listing there. I don't know why they wouldn't have it then um, set up in Betaflight. So that, that's kind of the weird thing with these manufacturers. This is your product. Like, where would hmm interesting Let's see what speedy b says oh look at that huh. right there iphone so it doesn't need a, a UART assigned in Betaflight to actually use it. Look at that. <laughs> so this thing has got, this has got everything. Uh, all right, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty darn impressed with this flight controller so far. Hopefully it doesn't just go up in flames the first time I use it. So this, <laughs> This is a hell of a value. This has got a lot for very little. And it was kind of like a package deal with the frame. So um, I'm kind of glad we went this route instead of the uh, the old tried and true Mamba F4. So pretty impressed. Pretty impressed, guys. I don't think that came with a Foxer sticker. All right. So, but anyways, in the, in the bag, all we have is the flight controller. 
We have the cable for the uh, 4-in-1 ESC2, the flight controller, the DJI connection cable, and for gummies. I do like the black and yellow aesthetic color scheme they're going on there. So I'm already I'm I'm excited about this flight controller. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very excited about it. Okay, so on to what I am really curious about. Well, actually, that flight controller I was pretty curious about, but the frame is. This is a non-apologetic, absolute straight-up clone of the Impulse RC uh, Apex, right down to including a file with it, just like, what comes with the, uh, the Apex here, look at that. So, it comes with a file, uh, a rubber mat, this is uh, like a rubber textured, it's not very compliant or squishy, but uh, hopefully it's good enough. A big old bag of parts. Man, this thing smells weird. <coughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't smoke. But this bag smells like <laughs> it smells like somebody smoked two cigars, blew it in the bag, and then packaged it up. This thing freaking stinks. It smells so damn bad. <laughs> God, no, uh, right. It reminds me of my grandfather. He used to smoke, uh, smoke stogies in the car. Oh, it oh man, it takes me back to a '85 Crown Victoria covered in cigar stains and uh, tobacco spit down the doors. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Uh, drone life, super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, more than happy to help you there, guy. And again, if you have any other questions, please hit up that Discord link. More than happy to help you out. All right, carbon fiber parts. So the arms are big old chunky bastards. Five mil arms, not the right camera. There we go. Five mil arms. Look at that. And uh, they're cut in the pr proper direction. Uh, we see we have the laser of carbon fiber going this way. Rather, If they were going to cheap out, then they would cut them at... Uh, I, I know this isn't very... Not a good demonstration, but they would be cut at an angle like that. Um, especially if, like, unibase uni plates... They typically cut corners by cutting them at the wrong angle because they can actually get more yield out of a sheet of carbon by cutting them that way. Uh, Donald's eight, poison gas. Pretty much, that's what it felt like. <laughs> oh, man. Corona from China? Well, what other Corona would there be? Oh, I'm going to get demonetized for that. Cuba woman's... <laughs> Sell us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. We got four arms. I would show you what it looks like compared to a normal Apex, but I have it packed away in my bag to go in the car in the morning, and I don't feel like digging through all that. Uh, so, four arms, and it's a split deck design. So you've got a top and a bottom plate, and it kind of they kind of go like like that. They kind of sandwich together. Um, it's a very interesting design. I do like the design too. And there is the top plate. And our, I, it just, it hits me every, like, every couple minutes, just that stench coming out of it. And uh, we got some camera side plates. Uh, a downside to this is you do have a bunch of press nuts that you got to press into the frame. Uh, a lot of people struggle, like, really, really struggle to get these things in there. Uh, there's no bill of materials or assembly instructions so you're kind of left up to your own devices to figure out how this goes together but your four or sorry eight uh, press nuts go on like you know a um, couple different ways you can do this you can press them in with a um, like in a vice uh, and I really don't like doing it that way uh, another way you can do it is by using a, uh, a cap head screw a washer and you can just kind of 
suck them in there. Uh, and it does look like a pretty dang tough frame. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm looking for a screw here. Phrasing? We still do phrasing? So let's go to the old, uh, the old box of extra hardware. And you want to look for a hardened screw. So this one here is a, it's a grade 12 maybe. And just any old washer. Washer like that. Let's take the two. Put them together like peanut butter and chocolate. Crank away on it. Probably could have found a shorter screw. So these uh, these these threaded inserts aren't nearly as uh, tight as the ones on the Apex. Those things required a ton of effort to get in there. And I'll be honest, um, I'm, I kind of like that better this way uh, because that was it was a real struggle to get the Apex together. Let's see, over the chat here. Uh, looks strong enough, and we'll see in a crash. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it feels like a very tough frame. I'll be I'm being very honest here. Um, the Apex is a heavy, super strong frame. This feels uh, the same way. And if, uh, if you didn't know, uh, the... Impulse RC Apex frame does have a warranty on it. I think it has a one-year warranty on it. Will and I think that they cover replacement carbon. Uh, something I didn't know until I bought it. Let's see. So, what do you guys got planned for the holidays? Sticking around, going places, anybody flying? Kind of curious how that's working out for everybody. Uh, let's see. The Apex is so damn expensive. Yeah, it is. It is a primo frame for sure. Um, it's a nice frame, but it is. It's definitely more expensive than it should be. Uh, but I think in that hundred dollar price range is kind of where all the premium, and I'm using air quotes with my mind. Uh, that's where all those frames kind of sit. I think you can't be taken seriously. It can't be taken as a serious um, quality frame for under a hundred dollars. It it's this weird conundrum where um, you can make a really good product, and if you don't price it as if it's a very good product, people won't think of it as a good product. Um, I don't know what that's called, but uh, it, it's kind of a proven thing. Like you know, you make a product, you you sell it for what it's worth, say twenty dollars. Nobody buys it. You jack the price up to fifty dollars, and people start buying it like crazy because people start to think that it's better because it's expensive. I don't know my my random gibberish ramblings. Um, yeah, I, I don't recommend doing the vice thing. Um, this is this is the way I do it. I've seen people pound them with a hammer too. That's again kind of a, a weird way to do it. I don't like that idea. So there we go. Nut plates. Uh, that was far, far easier than it was um, on the Apex. Make sure you throw that screw and washer away because they're definitely going to be all deformated. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Um, Travis Stevens, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Doing Christmas. Uh, some people ha hate Mamba stacks because they are cheap, but I love them. Yeah, exactly. It could be great, but since it's priced low, people associate low price with low quality, which um, is not always the case. All 
remember how the hell this goes together. So it's kind of fun to try to figure that out. Uh, not a whole lot of hardware choices to choose from, so well, let's just start putting things together. Uh, if this Apex frame, this Apex style frame, and by the way, this is called the Steel 5. I find that kind of funny, to be honest with you. Um, they all kind of go together the same way. Screws won't be accessible once put the base plates together. Uh, let's see. No, you can still get to them. It's not that ridiculous of a design. Ugh, my hands itch now. I don't know if it's mental or if it's actually like carbon fiber dust making them itchy. Oh, I love putting friends together. I don't know why. So yeah, you, know, you could you could take that file and go chamfer the carbon fiber and all that stuff. I just I don't know, man. I that was that was kind of a thing back in the day. I know some frames come pre-chamfered. I just I just don't care. It looks good. I don't know if it adds anything to it like as far as like structural in this, in this no, structure you know needed that word the word i was looking for you know what it is i don't know if that helps at all I'll go through and tighten everything up. Toxic FPV, welcome to the live stream, buddy. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, I missed a screw hole there. <laughs> Travis, all right. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Uh, I will. Uh, we'll see you around, man. Have a good one. So the arms, they don't interlock in the center, but they do lock against each other. Or at least that's the idea. If the damn holes would line up. I just didn't look like they're going to. Dang it. Do not want to line up. Well, that's mildly annoying. So I can't can't get my screwdriver or screw through the frame there because I'm an idiot and I had to screw in the arm and backwards. Gosh dang it. <laughs> oh man. So if your arms don't go in, it's because they're upside down. I'm an idiot. All right. Hey, 
Hey, thanks for the support, you guys. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, the arms use two screws each. And then, uh, actually, it's kind of three. I think. Yeah, because one of them is also a stack screw. I think. Unless I'm doing this all backwards, which is very much possible. All right. So there's your base plate. Now your stack screws are going to come up through these these big cutouts in the bottom here. So that would be your flight controller stack screws. Uh, the frame didn't come with stack screws. Um, that's just one of the little things that they do to kind of uh, cut costs on frames like this. So see, you can kind of see the, uh, the split deck design here. It's higher in the front, lower in the back, or maybe lower in the front, higher in the Yeah, lower in the front, higher in the back. So this should be the front here. Um, so we're going to use our longer standoffs, and we're going to put them together with those. And I'm wondering if all the Apex printed parts will work on this frame. wouldn't surprise me if, it, if they did. Just straight up one for one copy. Uh, Aaron Albin, are those Weeha tools you were using? These are not Weeha, these are Weera. Weera and Weeha are extremely good um, uh, tool manufacturers, and these are way better than a lot of the, uh, the hex drivers I've used out there. And if you're interested in these, uh, there are links to the screwdrivers down in the video description and the, uh, the whole doobly-doo thing there. Yeah, so these are uh, Weera. Very, very good screwdrivers. And uh, they're hardened tips, not like the, the cheap Chinese Swiss, uh, Swiss cheese grade stuff that you usually see. Uh, good tools make a big difference. Now, I know I'm going to tear this whole frame back apart when I go do the build, but I like to build the frame up just to kind of see how it looks. I'm not sure why I like to do that. I just do. Also, it's nice to know if you got all the parts or not. And it's kind of weird that the industry has relied so heavily on these three millimeter aluminum standoffs. Like every frame uses these things. Um, there's very few exceptions out there. Uh, I mean, I guess it does the job, but it's kind of weird that that we still use them so much. Private Island, welcome, buddy. Welcome to the live stream. And let's see. I think these are going to go in like like Zoll. Nope. Like that. There we go. And I remember putting these on my Apex frame and they I like almost had to pound them into place. The tolerance tolerances on the Apex frame are super, super tight. Down. There we go. I'm an idiot. There we go. <laughs> this frame smells so bad. <laughs> it smells so bad. 
Oh, I cannot explain how bad this smells. Nice big wide opening in the front of this thing. So running like a uh, like a custom mount for like a hybrid type camera, I think would be very very doable. Lots of room for activities. Uh, let's see. LS and what's the name of the frame? Is it a clone of Apex? LS and it is called the Steel 5. And yes, it is a direct, almost one for one knockoff of the Steel frame or the, the Apex. Uh, just for way less, way more or less monies. It is $25. It is a $25 Apex. Is it as good as the Apex? Probably not. But the whole point of the budget build was to build the best, cheapest, F7 five inch quad off a of Banggood that is worth flying. And I think we might actually, I think we may have gotten a winner on this frame. I'm actually really kind of digging this. Um, 30 by 30 mounting in the, in the center, 20 by 20 in the back. Uh, I don't have the VTX yet. That will work perfectly in the back of this thing. This is laid out pretty much exactly like an apex. Um, not too shabby. A uh, couple extra, screws and some nylon washers for your your camera mounts here on the side um, obviously we don't have the camera installed so we're not going to deal with that i mean it even comes with the file i mean how much of a how much of a knockoff could you get uh, let me grab a scale get a weight on this thing there we go all right let's see how much do they say this thing weighs they say Wait, 109 Gs, 109 grams. What do you guys think? Think it's gonna be close, more or less? And it is 105, 116. Oh, hang on. I took out all the extra bits. Hundred and twelve. Gravity must be a little heavier here in America than it is over in uh, China. Hundred and twelve point nine. So pretty close. Not exact, but pretty close. I know there's got to be some sort of manufacturing variance in there, but um, yeah. So far, I'm digging it. I think this is actually going to work out pretty, pretty well. She's not gonna be a light, not gonna be a light five inch, but it's definitely gonna be good enough. I mean, it is pretty stiff. I mean, there is there is a bit of flex in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me try to line that up. I mean, there's a little bit of flex in there, not a lot. A little bit of uh, arm wiggle in and out, with, but you know, it kind of has to be to actually get screws in there. But yeah, I mean, nice little features in there. We got the the zip tie um, anchors here. You know, little spots to run zip ties for your your pigtail and your antennas. Uh, 20 by 20 mounting here for a VTX or even a uh, Vista. Yeah, I'm not seeing a, off, a whole lot of downsides to it. There's other little zip tie mounting points here and here. Um, not really sure what that would be for, but I mean, they're there. Top plate, I didn't get the thick, thickness of the top plate. That is, and 
<sighs> Cheap tools. Two mil. Two mil top plate. Five mil arms. Right? Those are five, and it looks like a three mil uh, base plate. Yeah. So, all in all. All in all, not too bad. I think I think this is going to do well for us. Um, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts? I think it's worth putting it in this frame? I mean, for 25 bucks, can't go wrong. I mean... You know, you know, you're not buying a hundred, a one hundred dollar Apex, but you're buying a clone that smells like a freaking dirty ashtray. This thing just smells awful. <laughs> it smells so bad. Oh, uh, one more part we have here. We've got the, uh, the like the world's cheapest MMCX Axie antenna. Not, it's not a fox ear. I don't remember what company this thing was. This was uh, Turbo Wing. Cheapy. That Stark wouldn't fit the new PB and J props. Yeah, the Stark frame is a like five inch, like exactly frame. It doesn't do the 5.1 of the PBJ props. <laughs> Armington frames smell so good. Yeah. I've got a few Armington frames. I really like Armington. They were, they were good frames. All right. Well, like I said in the beginning of the live stream, this is going to be a quick one. I have to be up in a couple hours to make the 16-hour drive back up to Michigan for the holidays. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys here. Um, when I get back, we'll start building this guy up. I promise I won't build it except for on a live stream with you folks because why not, right? Okay, folks. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for um, giving me the support you do. And uh, better stop and see me. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, passing right by my house. Uh, man, where are you at? You're. You're in Kentucky, aren't you? I think. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, LS and Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, have a good holidays with the family. Um, I'll definitely be posting some videos from the road. Uh, that Crossfire Tracer Crossfire video, that'll be up tomorrow. Uh, Lexington. Uh, I think that's, yeah, I think that's the way we go. All right, guys. I will see you all next time and happy flying. Stay safe. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you around.